Hello and welcome back to the What We Said podcast, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a great day so far. I don't know where you guys live, but here it has been a little gloomy. Very rainy, very drizzly. Uh-huh. Dark in the mornings where I wake up, I'm like, what time is it? But I it's love so it. it's so hard to get up I when know. it's dark, I feel like. Which is typical winter for mm-hmm. pretty much everyone, I feel like. Yeah. But we're not used to I, I feel like anytime it rains here, we complain. I know. I Because we're not used to it. No. I feel like if you live anywhere where you don't... Is there a lot of places in the U.S. that get tons of rain besides, like, literally the um, North Pacific? Pacific, Northwest. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. I don't know about all the geography, but I feel like a lot of places get more rain and gloomy weather than we do, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we're the... We We are the sunniest. The sunniest, yeah. For sure. Weather, so... Even in Arizona, I felt... I mean, Arizona, obviously, is also very sunny, but... Living in Arizona when it rained, I loved it. Because when yeah. you when you not you know getting it all the time, it's nice. It's yeah. kind of a switch up. Feels like a different, exciting day. Yeah, it's true. Maybe because I did swim, so like if I saw a rainstorm, I was like after school. Oh my gosh, I don't have to go to swim practice. Best case There's scenario. Lightning. I feel like it really is just. I like a gloomy day. I like I like some rain. I think it's just the um, morning is like so. I'm already not a morning person, so if it's like so dark in my room and I'm so warm in my bed. I'm just like, oh, wow, it's hard to get up. Do you have blackout but, shades? Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. But they do like have a little, they're not fully, they are supposed to be blackout, but mm-hmm. the um, they corners, show like you can see a little bit of light, but when it's rainy and dark, it's like pretty dang dark. In yeah. My room when that's I wake how up. mine is too. We have blackout curtains and someone rang my doorbell today at 7 30 a.m. Isn't that a little too early? Or am Wait, I just like... Someone who? I, we don't know. Because Leif and I were, were And there was bed. nothing on the door? We went to bed kind of late. And we were like still in bed. And um, I just heard like ding dong, like super loud. And I was like, uh, someone just rang our doorbell. And Leif like, he maybe waited a little too long. Like he went and he was like, there was no one there. And there was like nothing there. But I'm like, 7.30 a.m. is... A little Am early. I out of touch? I feel like that's like, you shouldn't be... Maybe that's not early to most people. To me, that's like... Don't knock on my door until at least eight. eight. Yeah, eight thirty, maybe even. No, definitely. Seven thirty a.m. That is weird. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was like a neighbor or something. I have no idea. Yeah, I was gonna say if it was a delivery person, that's almost like what? Unless they have to get your signature or something. But yeah, if weird. you didn't have anything, that's concerning. Well, oh, do you have a tangent? <laughs> okay, fine. I'll tell you. What? I went to the gym this morning. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> fine, fine. What were fine. you up to at seven thirty a.m.? <laughs> I'm like, hmm. <laughs> You're like already home from the gym, actually. <laughs> How was it? Um, well, I've been going for the last couple of weeks, and ugh, I was like, maybe I just like, I'll just be a quiet grinder, you know, just go to the gym for no, my last never. trimester. That will never be me. <laughs> no, I, I was doing like two, um, like, what are these called? Oh my gosh, my brain. I actually don't know. <laughs> It's like the easiest, not, most simple thing. I, I was going to say dumbbell, but that's the thing you're holding. Yeah. Like a, a, not a bench press. Oh my gosh. What is it? What is it called? A curl? Like a Yes. A bicep curl. curl. A bicep curl. After like two bicep curls, I'm like, I should be recording this. I should be documenting that I'm doing this right now. But it was good. Um, I don't go You've been lifting long. weights? Literally two pound weights. Oh, okay. Like very minimal. I will just look up on Pinterest, like third trimester like light workout and it's just very light arms, legs, a lot of lunges and squats and stretching. And then just like very easy dumbbell work. Nice. But it's been good. I'm so sore after doing it. I'm not kidding. I use two and a half pound weights on each arm and doing lunges with those. I'm like, Oh my gosh, my butt gets so sore. My hamstring gets my hamstring. My, Oh, (laughs) my hamstrings get so sore. And, but yeah, it's been good. I also just feel like when, I posted this on my Instagram story, when you're pregnant and you go to the gym, you just have no, I'm like, this is the best. Like I have no expectations for myself. You guys are lucky I'm here. You guys. I'm doing this for you. No, it's true. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you see me picking up two pounds weight. I don't care if you see me doing it with no dumbbells. Yeah, exactly. Like. I I wouldn't know. I haven't worked out a day in months, but. Yeah, I didn't start. I I feel like it's weird to start in your third trimester, but I'm like, I feel better than I have my whole pregnancy. So. Yeah. Might as well try. I keep thinking that, like, I'll be like, okay, this is the week. And then I'm just like. As soon as you say that, almost your body's like, oh, we got to slow her down. (laughs) I know. 
And I feel like it's, it's, I, oh my gosh, I've been so humbled just truly this whole pregnancy because I was like, I am not going to make excuses. Like, I'm not just going to be like, well, I'm pregnant. So like, I'm just going to, this is when I wasn't and had never been. I was just like, I'm not going to be like, oh, so I'm going to eat whatever I want. Or like, so I'm just not going to work out because like I'm pregnant. And then when you actually like feel so sick, not even just like, oh, I'm tired, but it's like, just like very nauseous and very sick. It's like, I feel almost physically, I'm like, I can't, I feel like I'll just go and I'll just throw up in the bathroom. Like Mm -hmm. I just, and, and it would like not even be worth it or which sucks so bad. Like I, anyway, but I keep thinking, I'm like, this is the week, this is the week. Like I'm going to go back to Pilates. I want to go a few times a week. I've been going on walks, so that's good. But Mm -hmm. like right before I went to, um, I keep freaking wanting to call it Mendocino. It's Montecito. <laughs> Mendocino, but love that place. Mendocino Farms <laughs> is a restaurant that we love. And I always want to say that, but um, like right before I went to Montecito, I was like, okay, hopefully I'm like, I'm starting to feel better. So that'll be really good. And then TMI, but then I was like throwing up all day and I was like, yeah. oh, okay. So I'm not out of the clear yet, but I will say, I don't want to even say it cause I'll jinx myself. Yeah. But yesterday was like the best I had felt until, you drove? until nighttime. I drove Chelsea, like I picked her up, which I, I've just been, Chelsea and Leif have been my chauffeurs. I've just been like, I don't want to drive. I don't want to, it's hard yeah, to do stuff. It is. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like I haven't been taking medicine either for the past few days. Cause I'm like, okay, I think I'm. That's good. That's clear. a good sign. But I just am so shocked at like, I, I don't even want to talk about it. Cause I feel like it's boring. Like, I feel like it's just yeah. like, no one cares. No one wants to hear that you're sick. But I think it's just so shocking to me how long yeah. it's lasted. Like yeah. I am well into my second trimester mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I still can't sick. believe it's still around. I Which know. is how it was for you too. I know. Especially my first time. I feel like even more so my first time pregnant than this time. Like I remember at my, when we did my maternity shoot, I was like 21 weeks. Mm-hmm. And I remember eating, we went to like our favorite little taco place afterwards in LA. And I remember still being like, I can't eat yeah. what I want. Like this sucks. It's so crazy. I, I really just, yeah, I've been very, very humbled. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's very humbling. Again. I Especially just, when you have so many hopes and dreams for it. <laughs> totally. And I, and I really did. I was like yeah. so excited to have like a very healthy, I mean, I've had a healthy pregnancy as far as everything goes, everything's been good. So that's awesome. But mm-hmm. it's just like myself, I was like, I want to wake up and make like, a pregnancy smoothie every morning and like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, anyway, it's just been like, oh wow. I just have to like eat what I can keep down. But I, um, yeah, my appetite is coming back. I feel definitely the best I have. Mm -hmm. So I don't even want to like complain about it, but I think I just thought at this point it would definitely be like gone. Like I would just be feeling so good because everyone's like the second trimester is the best. And I'm just like, okay, we're we're getting there, but we're not in the clear yet. It's different for everyone. It sucks when you feel like you are the one who's still sick and everyone else I know I feel great you're like oh and I feel like it's been so long that people expect me to be better like Mm -hmm. even just like my friends it's like let's go do this and I'm like still sick (laughs) I'm still like not able to especially at night like Mm -hmm. I get really I just agreed to a dinner date for this weekend Mm -hmm. please with like a random guy I'm like I've been (laughs) I've been on him I've been on dating apps (laughs) no with like some of our friends like a couple friend and I was like okay I'll I'll go because I I want to do stuff but I I try not to even like agree to dinner because mm-hmm. nights are the worst for me so mm-hmm. it's rough it's rough out here but I I really am just like I've been feeling the baby move yeah and so it's really cool it makes it feel more when you're super sick in your first trimester you're not showing it all you know I guess you did go to the doctor and see but like I usually don't go until like 11 weeks or something yeah. like that <laughs> week 7 to 11 I'm like is it real? Is it real? I feel I so sick. I feel nothing. I look no different. I just feel horrible. And I'm like, I nothing think to this show is for real. it until you go in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I had lots of confirmation because of IVF just because yeah. it's like a different situation. But um, feeling them move is a whole different. Feeling them move, I feel like, is first of all, it's really weird. I'm like, what the heck? I feel something in my stomach. Like, yeah. But um, it also makes it more like just real. And I don't know. Even last night, I was like not feeling well, and then I was feeling them move, and I'm like, okay, okay. it's kind of worth it. Like, <laughs> all right, fine. Okay, I'm like, you're just making me sick, but it's I fine. Know. So I, I really am. So like, just That's happy fun. and yeah, even even amongst the the sickness, the nausea. Yeah, it's I all know. Good. It's it really is a trip. No, there's no um, 
tired, like pregnancy tired in terms of like it, because you are a little sick, the fatigue that you get when you're doing, when you are, even if you tried to go do like a workout, the fatigue that you get versus normally. So you always compare to how you were before pregnancy. But you like really can't. Yeah. So then when you're like, okay, I'm feeling better than I was weeks ago, but I'm still not where not I thought I would be. To, and not even close to where you were like previously. Exactly. So that's I, why it's always hard to be like, okay, well, yeah, I guess I can drive now, but I also feel like dying at night. You know? Yeah. But. Yeah. I know. It's, it's. It'll continue to get better, mm-hmm. I think, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Or just go in waves. But it should. Yeah, it's not going to get worse, time. probably. So that's amazing. Yeah. I um, was going to ask you for any pregnancy updates, but... That's it. That's it. That, that's it. I, um, I feel like I've just been... I don't know. I don't know if on the podcast people would notice, but like, I just feel like in general, I've been such low energy lately, just across the board. Mm-hmm. I was at Trader Joe's with Leif the other day and I met a Valley girl. She was, she said she listens to the podcast and, um, I was just so like dead that day. Like I was just so tired. We were like loading groceries in and she was like, hi, how are you? Or whatever. I was like, oh, I'm good. And, um, anyway, then she was like, oh, I actually listened to your podcast. And then I kind of like pepped up because I'm like, oh, like, you know me or like we know each other kind of. And I was like, I, and then the girl bagging the groceries also listened to the podcast. And anyway, I was like, I am such low energy right now. They're like, oh, it's fine. But I was just thinking about that. I was like, I just feel like I've always been such like an energetic person. Mm-hmm. And like for the past, I've have been beaten down yeah, yeah. through just IVF and whatever that I'm like, in general, I just feel such low energy. like, just energy. give me some time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, give yeah. me a second. I need to, and I also haven't been drinking caffeine. Yeah, that's another all. thing. That's it's just it, all of it t- combined. You're just extra tired. Just by my own, like, free will. Like, my doctor didn't want me drinking caffeine in my first trimester. And um, then it just, like, hasn't really sounded good. Like, sometimes a chai mm-hmm. or a matcha will sound good and I'll get it. But if it doesn't, I'm like, well, I don't want to drink that. Like, yeah. I just, sometimes, like, creamy stuff doesn't sound good to me. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I haven't been drinking caffeine. So I just feel like in general, I'm like, yeah, geez, I'm I'm a slug. (laughs) Like I got to hype it up. I know it is crazy. It's, I feel, I feel the same way. Not now, but like now I can't even remember that, but (laughs) I do relate. Unfortunately, I feel like I cursed you with all of my pregnancy woes. (laughs) I will say our <laughs> our journeys have been more parallel than I, I would know. like to. Um, I know than, I, so than I thought it would because I I just have friends all over the board who have had and I don't want to say yours has been the worst of it, but like maybe just because I am around you the most, yeah. it seemed like you got like the most sick mm-hmm. from it. So I thought it was very rare. Like mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that sucks so bad that that has been like yeah. how it is. I just figured like, yeah, that's just like a really rare thing. And, but even though my mom was like, that's how I was. Like when, when yeah. um, Chelsea was super sick, she'd just be like, oh, I feel so bad. Like, that's how I was with you. Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then sure enough, yeah, like happened. I feel like very parallel, like it happened to me. And I was like, oh. I know. Okay. Anyway. I'm always like waiting with bated breath when my friends get pregnant to be like, how is how it? are you feeling? Yeah. They're like 12 weeks. I'm just like waiting. They're either like, I have been dead or they're yes. like, I feel great. Yeah. No, nothing to report. I'm like, okay. Oh, I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. No. Like even not I, my worst enemy. No, like I know what you were saying about how you're like, like, you're like, oh, I feel great. You're kind of like, oh, wow, I'm jealous. But also it's like good. Like yeah. I don't want anyone to have to suffer like yes. this. It's so 100%. crazy. And I've been, it's been nice. I've been getting a lot of like uh, just comments and stuff. Whenever I mention it, they're like, like I could never relive my first trimester again. Like yeah. it, that was how bad it was. And I'm like, okay, so we're not dramatic, I guess. No, no. That's um, why when I got pregnant this time, I genuinely was like, seriously, like how can considering I, considering my decision-making skills, I'm like, whoa. You're like, I chose this. I chose this again. Yeah. Yeah. Like you wiped my memory clean. You must have. And I feel like, again, I've said this a million times. This is the last thing I'll say. I will stop talking about pregnancy I mentioned sickness being I'm sick like, in every single YouTube video I was realizing. I'm like, <laughs> when I was sick, like I mentioned it every because five it's seconds. it's so life altering. That's, mm-hmm. it's just shocking to me. It's so long. It's, it's so, so long. long. That's it's the so thing. long. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I was doing the math and I was just telling Leif last night how long it's been since I've been nauseous every single day. And <laughs> it's been well over three months. No, it's. It's and it's like so a stomach insane. bug, like eating saltines every day. I'm mm-hmm. like, I've never experienced anything like it in my life. No. But again, it becomes I routine. am grateful. Yeah. Okay. And I am the happiest I've ever been. So 
shut up. <laughs> the girls that get it, get it. Yeah, totally. They know. Totally. And if they don't, then, you know, hopefully karma doesn't come for you. Yeah. No, I mean, seriously, if you don't get, if you have great, healthy, like, you feel amazing, I am genuinely so happy yeah. for you. And amazing. I hope that you, it always is like that for you because it's, I know. yeah, it's not, it's not fun. So no. anyway. Wow. <sighs> Any pregnancy updates for you? You're feeling good going to the gym? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling, I do feel like I feel better than my first, I, I've heard that, that your first pregnancy is usually, well, some, I mean, again, it's different for everybody, but. Um, you usually get the sickest. You're feeling like the, the first most. one, yeah, because you, mm. it, maybe your body's just not used to it so much, so you're noticing more. Mm -hmm. Maybe this time I'm just like I know, kind of. I just I know what to expect. I think that's the thing is when okay, <laughs> we will move on from this because we do have a we lot to talk really, about. Today. <laughs> are we annoying now? I was just thinking. I'm like now, but like that's I, literally all I talk about in my life. It's like it's so hard when it's the only thing that is happened. Not the only thing. Like the most time consuming, all consuming thing that's happening in your life. Like, okay, I'm like scraping to find other things to talk about. That's true. And then sometimes when I don't post about it on Instagram, people are like, where's the, like, we want the yeah. bump update. I'm like, oh, okay. I just don't want to be making it my entire personality, but unfortunately, it's it okay. Is. Leave moms alone. <laughs> okay. True. We're going to get into a whole thing that's not about pregnancy at all. Okay. What was I going to say? Gorgeous. Though, about pregnancy. <laughs> I'm like, but anyway, back to me being sick. <laughs> Um, no, what was I gonna say? You're it was saying not about you feel better first. Um, oh shoot, what was yeah. the most recent thing you said? Just that, like I feel, or I'm more maybe used. Oh, oh, I think the thing is, and I think why sometimes you know it is important. It's annoying to hear people complain about things, obviously, but I feel like I had an opposite um, experience than a lot of girls who like will go on TikTok and be like, I only heard horrible things about pregnancy. And then I had the most amazing pregnancy. Like mm. I felt like the reason I talk about it sometimes is because I was the opposite. Like I hadn't you had thought it any was close be, like, friends. So easy. Yeah. I didn't have any close friends who had been pregnant before me or people that I was like seeing constantly. The only person I knew that was like, you know, close to me was my mom who had been sick. Yeah. And that was when I was literally five years old. Like, or when I, she was pregnant with me and then right. some of my siblings. Right. So I had no clue. So when I was sick, I was like, this is so shocking it's so jarring. To me. Like, I had no clue this was possible. I had barely heard of morning sickness in yeah. the first place. So now I'm like, I think it just was so shocking to me that I had the opposite reaction. You're trying to the word. It's like, it could be. Yeah. And it does, the, the thing that I kept like literally holding on to truly is that every, pretty much- Rarely this is not the case or like sometimes it's not, but for the most part, everyone would be like, it gets better. Like yeah. I promise like it feels like it won't, but it will get better. And it has. And so mm -hmm. it's like, okay, every day, like yeah. I feel like there's progress. There's an end. There's an end in sight. Like it's, um, anyway, so that's, that's nice. But yeah, I agree. It's just, it's like, well, I was, I saw this video of this girl. She's like, it's just that most people don't announce their uh, pregnancy until they're out of their first trimester a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So they feel a lot better. So then it's like, I'm pregnant. It's like all, it just looks very like, mm -hmm. oh, so cute and They great. already have a bump. You don't yeah. like even realize you can be pregnant without a bump. Yeah. yeah. And then you realize that it's like, they didn't post anything when they were in the trenches, you know, mm -hmm. which not that they need to, but it's like, that's why sometimes it's like a little bit shocking. Yeah. You're like I've never seen yeah, what like is any happening? content. Like I didn't know that this was a reality, but yeah. 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 It's crazy. The things women do. I know. Fun. Fun times. Well, anyways, did you have any other updates besides that? Let me look. Um, I had written down who is Zach Bia because I'd love to chat. Who is Zach Bia? Who Who is this man? Wait, are you genuinely asking? Or, or is there like a documentary coming out about him? I'm like, and I will be creating a documentary on his life. The guy no. who dated all of the girls, like Madison Beer, yes. Olivia Rod Rodrigo. The reason this came to my mind is because I... Okay, I don't. I hesitate saying this because every time I do a son's update, they we record these almost a week in advance, and then they they've like bad. bombed by the time I like I'm like they're doing amazing, and then by the time it comes out, they're like on a four losing streak. Yeah, I saw they're on a win streak. streak. They are on a win streak, and they're doing. They're actually like, you know, doing well and being consistent, and they've had two comeback games of like being 20 down and winning there was that's one the amazing day. I feel like the Suns when I watched them last season was like their curse 
is yeah. they would never be able to come back. No, they, they've been like, the whole thing this season has been like, they're horrible in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like they'll do really great and be like, have a lead and then just blow it. And we're like, bye. Mm-hmm. But they have been for the past, like, few weeks coming it's back. been actually like they're coming back they're doing really well <gasps> I miss Devin, Devin Booker, Booker has like got a had like a 52 point game the other day that. um Kevin Durant had two 40 over 40 point games back to back like doing amazing so it's been it's been really fun to watch them lately um anyway the reason I'm bringing this up is because I followed I I now been developing um Feelings. <laughs> I'm like, feelings and a crush. <laughs> no, I've been developing a fondness for Kevin Durant. I didn't yeah. really like okay. know much about his personality. And I kind of thought he was just a bit boring. I know, I know he's amazing, but like as far as his personality and his vibe, I was just like, okay. I know he's like a superstar, but I just wasn't like drawn mm-hmm. to him necessarily. But um, I've been watching a few of like his interviews and his style. I actually kind of like, like I I'm like, okay, I like him. I like him Durant. So I followed him on Instagram because he posted something kind of funny. Anyway, that happened in the game mainly for laughing, but I was like, I need to follow him. So I followed him and I'm going through his Instagram and I'm like, his Instagram's kind of like, he understands the art of a photo dump. Really? Slay. So I'm like, he only posts he literally like your once formula. a year. I'm like, and he, <laughs> that is my next conspiracy. He wants to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Durant, imagine. Um, he, wow, that one would really, that should be my next one. Kevin Durant, <laughs> use my photo dump. It's like actually not even your formula at all. No, I don't even think it was. But I, um, I'm um, i scrolling through and he just has, in one of his photo dumps, is a um, photo of Zach Bia. Like just like, yeah, like he's like posing. It's like they're hanging out. And I'm like, and then I was reflecting. I'm like, Okay, who are you, sir? I have seen you on an episode of the Kardashians. I've now seen you on, like, he was at dinner with, like, Kendall and people. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was, like, kind of an intimate dinner. So it's like, okay, you're obviously very, you're close with them. You're very well connected with them. Um, Yeah, so I'm on Kevin Durant's Instagram. Devin Booker was, Devin Booker was, like, liking all of his um, Hmm. posts and stuff. Dated Madison Beer. Dated Olivia Rodrigo. So I was like, literally, who is this man? Yeah. I, I, I wondered if you knew anything about him. I looked it up, Kinda. but I didn't deep dive at all. It was like, he's an American DJ. And I'm like, well, how does he? I don't understand I, who I this guy I is. I think I listened to one interview. I think he was on the Zach Sang show. Mm-hmm. I think that's where it was a while ago. And he was kind of, or maybe it was BFFs. Maybe both. Um, and he was answering questions. Like they were kind of asking the same thing. Like, who are you? And how are you so famous? Really, and like, mystery. so connected. And he was playing it very cool and being like, I don't know. I just like, I think he's been in the music industry, maybe producer or something. I think he also is a producer is what I was reading. So but maybe he's just kind of like one of those people, but. Cause I'm like, you must be a charismatic, cool person to be connected to like, you know, for like celebrities yeah. to be posting about you and be obsessed with you. Like clearly you're. But he doesn't have like you know what I, energy he gives me what club promoter vibes where she's yeah. like everyone knows them like they seem to like him but when you're you're just like wait like what is it about you you're that's, so popular there's something iffy about you well because we don't know what it is let's like if you I mean maybe because girls have written songs about him maybe that, I'm like I wonder why I have an iffy feeling Olivia literally wrote vampire about him that was about Zach Bia mm-hmm. yeah the plot thickens I'm telling you it's like who. <laughs> And there, remember those those um, photos of him and Madison Beer? That they were fighting? Yeah. Yeah. And she wrote, what's it called about him? So, allegedly. Um, I can't remember the song. It came out like 2020 probably. Like, why are you such a Gemini or something? Oh. Or maybe it wasn't him because I think maybe he's like, I'm not a Gemini. I don't know. She's written okay, a song well, or two about him. Regardless, he's a mystery to me. I'd love to deep dive. I don't know what... I always thought he was not, um, I think, I think why I was confused is I thought he was not well liked. Like I thought that mm. a consensus was like, oh, we don't like him. But I, maybe that's just because I saw those clips of, or those photos of him in Madison Beer and people were like, oh, he's like yelling at her or something. So I was like, oh, okay, we don't like that. Right. But then he's like <laughs> with like every him. celebrity ever. I'm like, oh, so we, it, do people like him? Like I didn't, that's I what just, I'm he's saying. a mystery. I'm, I feel like he's a club promoter who like, you know, like. What took your friend on a date and mistreated her, but then everyone's like friends with. And you're like, wait, what? I thought, yeah, yeah that's yeah, the vibes yeah. okay. he gives me. Because well, she wrote Vampire about him, how he like sucks the fame. Like he's just like a fame hungry person. Well, it's tracking. Yeah. And I, apparently it's working. Yeah. And it's working. Anyway. Zach Bia, please that. respond. We'd love to have Who you on the you? podcast. 
He's like, absolutely <laughs> not. Like, I'm like, he's us. giving club promoter vibes. <laughs> Will you come? I'm like, we Sit hate right him, right? <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, I wondered if you had any more intel. No, that's but all I know. Just a mystery to me that I thought I'd bring up. I don't think he really get, because I listened to the interview wanting that same tea. Mm-hmm. And I don't, he doesn't really give much info okay. about it. She's like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess like as he wouldn't, like mm-hmm. if you're very well connected, you're not going to be like acting feral on in an interview because then True. everyone's going to be like, bye. We don't want you to ra- you around us anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of like the popular things. It's like, how did Zach Bia meet Drake? Like all the <laughs> common questions. Yeah. It's like, who is Zach Bia? Like, anyway. I know. Someone said... Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think he's a Nepo baby. I think that's like a misconception about him that he was saying like I'm not a Nepo baby. Mm. But sometimes Nepo babies say that. Yeah. It's like I'm not a Nepo baby. But then you find out their dad like actually is like cousins with Drake or something yeah. weird. You're like, hmm, do you know what a Nepo baby mm. is? Okay. Um That was literally my only update. <laughs> my update. <laughs> I just um, wanted to know. I have two things. And they kind of relate to each other. Well, actually, I have three. The first one is literally one sentence. I've been using the tushy bidet. Okay, I wanted to give an update on that because mm. weeks ago, um, <laughs> I talked about, I scared everyone with the bidet talk and the toilet paper and how, you know, maybe we're not as clean as, as you think thought. here. And I've been, I wanted to wait a while. I've had it for a couple months now. Um, the tushy is like a bidet attachment. And I think it was like a hundred something dollars. You can get a couple different variants. Mm-hmm. And I love it. Everyone really? should get one or like it's a great gift. Um, it does look a little chunky on the toilet, but it's like it's your toilet. You don't yeah, really need really it cares. to look cute or aesthetic. But um, it's very it, – there's a little bit of trial and error, but it definitely okay. is great. Like afterwards, I'm like, wait, I've never been cleaner. This is so amazing, so nice. Nice. Um, so look into that if you're <laughs> feeling Thank you for crusty. the update. <laughs> If you're feeling crusty is really second of all. That's really a lot. <laughs> Have you seen Pookie is looking absolutely gorgeous? Wait, yes. <laughs> but I haven't again like dove in. Like I don't I exactly know what's night. happening. You dove in? Okay, tell me everything. I mean, I I don't know if there's that much to say about it besides like they're taking over TikTok. If you don't know, it's this couple. His name's Jet, her name's Campbell. Mm-hmm. Honestly, cute. She's yeah, no, cute names. Cute names. And she has cute style like she'll like dress up and then her husband is just like this southern sweetie boy who just will be like Pookie's looking absolutely amazing tonight like she's got on this sexy whatever and she's just standing there just letting him compliment her slay and so I've been seeing you know of course as everything does like everyone worships him they're like he loves her he's obsessed with her and then people like no but she doesn't like him like you can tell her body language like just picking this couple apart I was wondering if you'd see them if what your thoughts were I haven't, I've seen little bits and pieces, but again, I haven't like, Pookie's I'm not completely absolutely <laughs> stunning tonight. Just I love me. the Pookie of it all though. Like that is everything. Has he always called her Pookie? Cause I've seen, I know they've been kind of doing those videos for a, like a while. I think he does. Like he's always said that. Yeah. I mean, he'll call her Campbell sometimes, Okay, but I think her last name might be Pookie. Phuket <laughs> or oh, something. really? Or Pucky. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up. But okay. I was like, I could see where he got Pookie from. Wasn't just like a little dog name, but. Um, I'm going to start requesting a leave calls me Pookie. Like that is everything. Literally. <laughs> like he was just like, he'll look at her outfit and be like, I'm loving the all black look tonight. Like looking, they were in Paris. He's like, this is a bonjour everyone. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is looking so good. This is perfect for what we're doing. I got a special gift for you. He'll bring her like breakfast in are the morning. Are they rich? Are they like very rich? That's the thing. People are like, you know, she's just there for the money or like it, it must be swinging. <laughs> so <Okay. common. laughs> You guys know that like there's more to freaking life than, I actually really hate that. Like I've seen this couple. Uh, it must be swinging <laughs> as we did though. That is actually hilarious. But I, that is always like so sad to me when couples will post there's this it's couple like that I saw stuff. yeah and the general consensus is that in this other couple that I'm talking about they'll make videos together but um people think that he's like way more attractive than she is mm-hmm. and people will always just be like yikes like I, I don't even know what I can't even think of the comments like who's gonna tell him like just weird things and I'm like guys there's more to life there's than more looks. to life than freaking looks it's not 
they don't always have i mean whatever that that's actually so funny but no it's also he's not a bad looking guy it's not no. like he's so ugly or something like people say he looks like matt damon which i could kind of see but i also just think people need to understand that not everyone is acting 100 percent, you know themselves on camera not even themselves but for a random couple they're standing there and they're like she looks like she hates him like she has like a terrified look on her face i'm like she's not a trained actress or like a trained right. like um, it's hard to be yourself sometimes on camera, totally. it's like, especially if you are not used to it. Like a lot of people get shy when they get on camera. She could just be kind of shy and like not or be like, like not, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, I, I love you so much. Give me kisses. <laughs> like she's just like, oh, thank you. Like she's just Like sweet. not knowing even, not, not that she doesn't, but like it's hard to also take compliments yeah, on camera. Yeah, sometimes you feel it's awkward. Like, oh. Yeah, that is, I need to go on an absolute deep dive of this because that is everything. I mean, they are definitely rich. Yeah. <laughs> The, the few videos I saw was giving, it was giving rich. 100%. But also like, especially I feel like with a guy, if, if the girl seems more attractive than the guy, but the guy's obsessed, mm -hmm. that is all you can ask for in this life. Literally. Is, is literally like a man who treats you very well and is obsessed with you. That means a lot more than yeah. what he looks like. 100%. So, if you get along with him and you like his personality and he yeah. treats you right. More than a lot of you guys can say. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. sometimes the, I was just talking about this at, friend with, or at lunch with one of my friends. Like sometimes the better looking, like if, if a guy's like really, really good looking, it's scary. scary. Yeah. It's like not a red flag, but yeah. they've been like probably just girls have been obsessed with them their entire lives. Mm -hmm. It's They haven't had to work for anything. Yeah. It's like there's got to be something a little bit. You gotta be a little ugly. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Whenever I feel ugly, I always tell myself that. I'm just like, this is good. I'm glad that I'm ugly. This like, is good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm a little ugly. It would be like I, such a weird life to just be completely perfect. No, I had the same thought the other day because I, um, okay, I'm trying to know how to say this. But like sometimes <laughs> if someone's trying to be funny, mm -hmm. but they're so hot, gorgeous, it's not funny mm -hmm. at all because you have to be a little bit ugly yeah. to be funny. You know, to, to really execute on a joke, I really believe that. You have to have, or something has to be, maybe you've gone through a lot in your life. There mm -hmm. has to be something about you. I know not everyone's perfect, but like a, just a gorgeous girl. I've seen um, some content of this girl who's so beautiful and she'll try and make like silly, quirky, relatable content and it's never received well. People don't well. like it. And it's because she's so beautiful. Yeah. And it's like, what a curse, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean- well, maybe I'd take it, but like <laughs> I being would absolutely I'm like, perfect. That's why I don't like being gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why my life is also very hard because I'm perfect. But it's like, it just is different when you're so mm -hmm. like your, your face is perf perfect. Your body's perfect to you dress so nice standards. Mm -hmm. It's like, no one's going to think you're funny or relatable. I know. So you just have to be a take model. Comfort Sorry. in that. No, literally. I was thinking, I'm like, you still can make money by your appearance, just not for your personality, probably. Yeah. And it's actually very sad for <laughs> being serious, <laughs> like for really beautiful girls. I actually feel, I know a couple in my life who are just so beautiful, like that guys will That's like all stop they them on the street. And sometimes it's all they see. They don't look past that they could be funny or that they could be whatever, but it's hard to see past the beauty no, sometimes. No, there's this, do you know the video? So beautiful girls, I see I see your struggle. Like we're with you <laughs> and we know what it's like too. No, have you seen that? Um, we know what it's like too. <laughs> have you seen that viral My hardest clip? trial in life. <laughs> Literally the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Um, you know that clip of Madison Beer saying, she's like, it's a viral, it's always mm, yeah, yeah. on things. It's like, oh, sometimes it just gets old and it's like, oh, you're so pretty. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I see yes, that though. That's so that's valid. so valid. Like mm -hmm. even though for most of us mere mortals, we can't understand that. We're like, oh, that'd be nice. If people mm -hmm. literally just looked at you, were like, you're literally gorgeous. But that actually would be so annoying to be like, I have so much more to offer. And like all anyone sees is like, oh yeah, yeah, she's pretty. Mm -hmm. Like- that actually, I actually would be really. I think it's hard hollow. for those girls to date. I do. I feel like it's very hard for those girls to date and find a guy who appreciates the underneath. So when yeah. they do find a guy who does appreciate them for like what's underneath and not just their looks, it's like a diamond in the rough. 
Totally. Because most guys are just like, I want this pretty thing. Yeah. And like, I want to claim it as my own. Oh so then you're gosh. like, wait, I'm not a prize to be won. In the words of Jasmine. Wow. Who also, if we're starting, if we're going to talk about where my body issue came from at a young age, let's talk about Jasmine from the cartoon Aladdin. Her waist is a thing. <laughs> I, I don't think I think she's in two. I think she's genuinely in two <laughs> because her she's waist tiny. is literally if you you have to zoom up to even see it. <laughs> and wow. she was my favorite Disney princess with that's her tiger. She was so slay. That's where it all began. They all were like that though. I obviously love Ariel. Ariel because of the red hair, and I feel like her waist was also microscopic. Tiny. Uh, anyways, anyway. Wow. So if you're really pretty, we feel bad for you. Mm-hmm. And you actually do have a hard life. And now we've, that the whole episode is over and we haven't talked about anything that we were supposed to talk about. That's okay. We can make cool. this, we can make this snappy so you guys can get really into the mode of what we're about to talk about because mm-hmm. we created our very own formula for 75, you can call it 75 soft, 75, 75 hard Valley Girl Edition, whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it 75 Hard VVG Edition because we've got some rules that you all have to follow. Starting on February 1st. And we're going to do it too. As we were making this, we're like, wait. Oh, we have to (laughs) abide by these. We tried to make it not easy, but like, yeah, that's why we're calling it 75 Soft because I feel like any of these challenges, 75 Hard is actually really intense. Like I've never done it, but just looking at it, I'm like, geez, that's so, I mean- it's not not doable, and I think a lot of people love it, but it's just, like, very specific, yeah. and I don't like that about it. It's um, very time-consuming as well, it mm-hmm. seems. I mean, again, I've never done it, but it's a the lot. T- the two workouts a day, like, really, that throws me off. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. the thing. That's, like, at one outside. I think 75 hard is no alcohol, no sugar, like, it's very strict diet, and then two you workouts pick a, diet. a day. Yeah, 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 you pick a diet, stick to it. Um, two workouts a day, one of them has to be outside. You have to drinking read. like a gallon of water or something. Yeah. You like have to read huge, something. Have to read 10 pages or something of a book a day. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, I don't know. It's I not just feel, crazy, but it is hard. Like it's a, it's hard mm-hmm. and it's a long time and it's, yeah. I don't know how many people, maybe people can let me know, but how many people do 75 hard and then just keep up that lifestyle because it's not, you know, I feel yeah. like they do it and then they're like, oh, that was nice, but I'll be going back to one workout a day, you know? Right. It's not the norm it's for like an ev- a- everyday average life. No, it's not very, I wouldn't imagine sustainable unless, I don't know. Again, unless you pick things that are more like you go on a walk every morning and that's one of your workouts outside yeah. and then I don't, whatever. Yeah. You can make it work, but maybe we're just babies. But we're doing a we're doing an, a little bit of an easier version. Yeah, a Valley Girl edition that we have five things to follow mm-hmm. for every day and it's customizable. Yeah, that's it's a the, customizable that's the beauty plan. Of it. So if you guys are like, yeah, just don't like one of them or like want to switch it out, then we'll give you alternate ideas. Yeah, I think you guys are gonna, I think you guys are gonna like it. I'm excited to do it. I love, maybe it's just my personality, but I do love a little challenge here or there, even though I know it's not gonna be like, okay, this is for the rest of my life. You know, I like doing a little good. short term, you know, week long, month long challenge to, you know. Just make myself feel accomplished in something. Yeah. Since this is going up a few days, we thought February 1st could be a good start. Mm -hmm. Start of February. Or you could start on Monday because February 1st is like a Thursday or Friday. I forget. But um, whatever you want. February 1st, right? Yeah. Pinky promise? Yeah. I did not start today. That's for sure. I was looking around my room. We'll get into it. But I was like, oh, I'm like, okay. (laughs) It's actually not that it'll be hard, but I'm like, yeah, I don't follow this exactly. So it will be a change and it will be good. It'll be good. It'll be, um, it's a more holistic approach to health and wellness. Not so much, you know, just eating and working out. All right. I'll start with the first one. Okay. So this one is the most customizable one. Okay. So you're going to Pick your morning or night routine, whichever one you want to work on. So for JC, we know it's pick, the morning. And I'm going to pick my night routine. Nice. And you're going to pick three things to add to that routine that you're going to do for the next 75 days. So you can pick whatever you want to do. Maybe you already have like a night routine. You just want to add something in or a morning. And you've been like, I really want to do red light therapy for 15 minutes. Or I really want to start reading. Or I really want to, you know. Some of the things that I wanted to add was like, um, 
a hair serum. Cause there are lots of things like that, that I want to be consistent in. Mm-hmm. Cause they'll be like, okay, do it for, it like requires consistency. Yeah. Like 60 days and you'll notice a difference. I'll do it yeah. for like a week and then I forget. So like a hair serum, I've been doing like a lash serum at night. I do use Thrive Cosmetics one. I'm pretty sure like on their website it says it's pregnancy safe, but uh, obviously if you're pregnant, you, you already know the drill. You have to ask your doctor a million things, but mm-hmm. um, you could do a workout at night. If you wanted to add a workout into your morning or night routine or a walk, you can add any three things that you want to, to either one and stick with it for 45, 45 days, 75 like, days. We'll just do 45. Like, you know what? Do 40 no, days. No, I was actually thinking, I'm like, should we do 30 days soft? Like 75 is so long. I know. But whatever. We need to mark what day is the 75th day so we can like recap or like talk about it. I think it's, well, we no, February is shorter. So I was going to say, let's see. I mean, that's 10 weeks, right? 10 weeks plus five days. I don't know. Don't make me do April math. 15th. Sheesh. <laughs> You'll have like I a quit. child. You're, <laughs> no, you're- literally, I was going to say, I will be doing this postpartum, so. Goodness. But- th- it's easy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy enough. If this was actually 75 hard, no. No. Um, so that's the first one. You can. Do you have any what, like ideas or things yes. to add to that? So, well, the three things I'm adding, because I'm working on my morning routine. That's my goal. My nighttime routine, we already know. It's <laughs> really, I love my nighttime routine and I'm really consistent with it just because it's like my lifestyle at this point. So it's honestly not hard for me to do it yeah. at this point. It's just what I do every night. Um, so the three things I'm adding to my morning routine are that I want to make breakfast and like my morning beverage or whatever I'm doing at home. I feel like I personally, Leif and I go out to like coffee shops a lot and whatever. I'll just like go and get avocado toast from a coffee shop and when I could very well make it at home. But um, I really personally like making that stuff at home. Like I usually prefer my own avocado toast that I make. Mm -hmm. I prefer even like my chai, my matcha sometimes. Like I like to make my own stuff for breakfast. I'm not as good with lunch and dinner. Like I'm not a great cook yet. Um, but that's that's my goal is to, for the most part, I'm not gonna, well, I'm like, I'm not gonna be, it's literally the challenge. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna do it every day. <laughs> but I, specifically, I really wanna do that on all the weekdays. Yeah. I think on the weekends, if like, my friends want to go out to a coffee shop or like Leif and I want to go out. I think that's fun. But I think I really would like to have my morning routine be more at home in the morning. So this morning I woke up and did just um, like a probiotic yogurt with berries and granola and almond butter. And like, I you obviously can switch up, do whatever breakfast you want. And I will just do a different one every day, but morning beverage and breakfast at home. Um, number two for the morning routine for me is to either go on a morning walk or a workout. And I know that's really simple and like, yeah, duh. But again, this is about being consistent. It doesn't matter if it's the most classic thing ever. Yes. I have just not been doing that consistently based on what we talked about for 30 minutes in today's episode. So (laughs) I'm trying to get back on to just like, whether it is just a short walk, um, whether it is a workout or that could even just be like sitting on my yoga mat and doing a stretch, whatever, like something, some type of movement, because that helps my mind a lot too. And I really like starting the morning like that. So that's number two. And number three for me is tidying up my room and making my bed. So I want, when I leave my room, I really want it to be just very tidy. And again, as I was leaving for the podcast today, I was like, (laughs) because I have been sitting on the ground and doing my makeup, like in my room, which normally I do it in my bathroom, but I've just been wanting to like sit and not stand. And so I had like makeup everywhere. I had a bunch of stuff because I was like choosing an outfit. So there were like clothes all over. My bed wasn't made when I left. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I, that's something I also want to do every morning. So those are the three things I'm adding for every day. And I feel like that will make me feel like I have my life a little more together. I love that. Okay. My minor for night, I already said one of them, my lash serum. I've been doing that. I literally have on my mood board, my vision board for this year is a girl with long eyelashes because I feel as though I have, I have room to grow quite literally there in that, in that region. And so every night I put on, um, I want to be, I kind of been doing it, but I haven't been as consistent. That's why I want to add this is putting on my lash serum every night reading before bed for like 15 minutes. I read sometimes, but I'm definitely not consistent at it. Like it's not something I do every single night. 
And then the last thing at night is um, magnesium. Mm. It's like spray. I have been doing a little more the last couple of weeks, um, like since the new year, but I want to make sure that I stay consistent with it because I do feel like it helps me sleep. I have been taking my supplements and I feel so much better. I was like, wait, I think I've been anemic my entire life because I've been taking iron because my doctor told mm. me I was anemic. And right. that's very common in pregnancy, especially near the end of pregnancy to be anemic. But I was like, wait, I feel so good. And because I've been so consistent with my probiotics and my um, prenatals and my iron supplements and I've been feeling so good. And, and with the magnesium at night, I'm just like, wait, I think it's all, these are working. It's all working together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So those are my three. Uh, the Kindle one is definitely like reading my Kindle or reading at night is definitely something I've been wanting to do for forever. And it's just so hard for me to be consistent with it. Mm. I'll do it once or twice. If I really like a book, I'll do it. But it's not just like part of my routine yet. So sometimes you have to honestly pick. Well, this is an obvious take, but a book that you're very interested in. Because exactly. like I've done the thing too. I know you've said like, oh, I'll just read a boring, kind of like a parenting book that it's like, eh. Yeah. But sometimes for me, it's like, I have to be really hooked on a book and then I get excited to read exactly. at night. Because it's very, it's like, oh, I get to find out. It's, it's, I've made this um, analogy many times, but it's, it's like you're watching your favorite show. Like I get into bed and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to figure out like what happens next in this book. Yeah. But if I don't care about the book, it is very hard for me to have the motivation to read because I'm just like, I don't care about this. I know, I just got... Uh, I was telling you about this, but I'm going to start reading Remarkably Bright Creatures. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. Yeah, my mother-in-law told me about it, and I've been seeing everybody post about it, so stay tuned. It sounds like an octopus mystery. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> the weirdest book ever, but Everyone I've heard it's it. really good, so yeah. I'm interested to see how you like it. I'd pro- I'll read it if yeah. you like it. You want to do the next one? Yes. Um, the next thing, I have these in a different order than I you, know. I, that's fine. I don't know why I started with I that I think one. that was this a good one to start okay. with. Um, the next thing we're going into the toxic sorority, (laughs) um, culture, but get two out of three things ready every day, meaning hair, face, or outfit. So two out of three, the reason we say hair and face and not makeup, this was, I guess, even more of like my request because I feel like sometimes I don't want to be putting on makeup. I don't want to be putting makeup on every day, but face can mean skincare. And I really or just like feels, brushing up your eyebrows. Yeah, or brushing up your eyebrows, putting on like some cha- lipstick and or not lipstick, sorry, lip gloss. <laughs> I'm like lip liner, everything, eyelash thing. extensions. No, I will just do like a hydrating serum and moisturizer in the morning and like brush up my brows. And I feel so much and like a summer Friday's lip balm or something. Mm-hmm. And when I don't do that, and my especially during the winter, my face is like very dry and I like I really don't feel as good. Just in general going about my day. So for me a lot lately, it's been just skincare and like an outfit and the outfit is also (laughs) very comfortable, but I feel like it's better than just like staying in, especially if you work from home, like staying in what you slept in or Mm -hmm. just getting into like a very mismatched outfit that like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something that you can walk out of the house with and feel like confident. Yeah. So there's nothing worse than when, yeah, you don't have your hair done. You don't have, maybe you've done a little skincare, maybe just wash your face and you have an outfit that's just like atrocious and you just, it, you do not feel it's well. not very motivating to like get out, go to a workout, get out, go do, you know, get things done, whatever it is. Obviously, no. if you have to get up and go somewhere anyways, um, you probably already do most of these things, but. I mean, heck, you can do three out of three, but. I was going to say, like, whenever I would work, um at any of the different jobs I worked at, like I worked at anthropology for a while and they make you like wear a cute outfit um, or just like a customer service job. The days that I would just like not put in any effort and just go and be like, yeah, this is fine enough. Like it just ruins your day. Yeah. At least for me, I would just be like, my hair is feeling greasy. I don't feel cute. Like I'm feeling my outfit. Every time I pass the mirror, I'm like, oh gosh, I really could have done better today. I, even today, like my hair was kind of gross and I'm not, I was planning on showering tonight or washing my hair. Um, but even if I do feel like, okay, my hair's kind of greasy, it's like put it up in a slick, like mm-hmm. it's better to actually put effort, put a little bit of effort in rather than just like throw it up and like, and my hair is just like yeah. greasy and in kind of a messy bun or something. It mm-hmm. like feels so much better to just, you can, you can work with what you're working with, you know? 100%. Agreed. Um, so yeah, I always feel much better when I do that too. And I think two out of three is a good, is a good rule. Yeah. So you're not going above and beyond mm-hmm. crazy. 
But, you know, you're kind of keeping up with society standards for women. Mm -hmm. You know, do the bare minimum. <laughs> okay, the next thing that we have is to cook one meal a day at home and make it as intentional and healthy as possible, whatever that means for you. Obviously, everybody follows a different trajectory in terms of what their diet, you know, consists of, what they want it to consist of, um, your wellness interests. So this looks so different for everybody. But like for me personally, it's kind of the same with breakfast. A lot of the times we'll go out for breakfast um, just because I think it's fun. Like yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, let's go out, you know. And I like starting my day way better. Physically, I feel better when I make breakfast at home. That's how I feel. I remember. I went out this morning and I'm like. Really? Feeling gross. I remember. Um, first of all, food delivery is something. I saw this girl post. She was like, oh, how often do you order in? And it was like a poll. And I would love to know what everyone says. Literally, everyone was like, never. Like, uh I. It was like the results were astonishing. And I was realizing that it's just like the culture I feel like we're in yeah. and where we live. And I don't know if it's our job or what it is, but like a lot of my friends order in a lot, mm -hmm. including me or go out to well, eat a lot. Well, it's also expensive. It is expensive, but I will say sometimes like cooking at home is also expensive. Mm -hmm. If you're following certain recipes and you have to go out and get very specific ingredients, like I think if you have a lot of meals that you just like know how to make know how to make and are just kind of simple where it's like oh taco bowls and it's just like ground meat and beans like those can be cheaper but mm -hmm. I think sometimes if you are following a more I don't know even like grocery stores here like Leif and I will go and get like salmon and stuff for the marinade I'm like so this expensive. is just as much as eating out like when I'm doing the math I'm like that was kind of the same but I do think you will save a lot of money if you are only cooking at home and mm -hmm. especially if you're not ordering in because you have to pay delivery fees and taxes and like all of that stuff. So yeah. it does get very pricey too. It like adds up very quickly to be ordering in a lot. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, this girl did a poll and she was like, how often do you order in or whatever? And it was like, I swear it was like 90% was like less than once a week, like pretty much never. And then all the other things were like, it was just like very small percentages. Really? It was like some people said like two plus time, like two to three times a week. There was like four times a week. And then there was like, a ton, like 10 times a yeah. week or something. And um, anyway, I was like, okay, that's very eye opening because number one, like it really is so, it, it's a waste of money if you do it a lot. And also, again, with the phase of life we've been in, Leif has like made a lot of food, but sometimes it would make me, I'm like, I don't want to smell anything in the mm -hmm. kitchen. I don't want to cook because I'll get sick from it. So I was ordering, I feel like I was ordering a lot. And it would be like, oh, whatever I want in the moment. It was so weird and specific. I was like, so I would just order. Yeah. I can't even imagine how much money I spent on food the past like month or two. Oh, I know. My Postmates is crazy when I'm pregnant because it's like in media. I'm like, I want this. I'm ordering it right now. And who knows? Yeah. Maybe I'll want this too. So I'll add something extra and be like, you know, maybe this will make me sick, but I'll get something else instead. Like, okay, I'll get a side salad too to see if that's like yeah. going to hit. Yeah. I, where were we going with this? Because, well, what the, we going making the one meal a day at home as intentionally healthy as you possibly can. So yeah. that does look different for everybody. So, uh, you know, maybe cooking is not your thing and you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to start cooking in general. But if, even if you do cook all the time, I feel like at, at times in my life where I was cooking all the time and I was never ordering out, I was so used to what I would make that I wouldn't like explore new recipes. I'd just be like, okay, well, I'm making this for breakfast, making this for lunch, making this for dinner. And when you put a little extra effort into like, say you're going to do dinner, be like, okay, I'm really going to add in, you know, extra veggies this time, maybe take away some of the things that have, you know, whatever you don't like in your diet. I'm not going to name specific things, but mm -hmm. um, just really focusing and making it be like, okay, this is a very nutritious meal. Maybe it's not like the most delicious meal, but this is the meal today that I'm really going to try and get as many nutrients as possible. I remember what you said that I was thinking of is I remember consciously, I think Leif and I deleted Postmates for a month or something and we were trying to make food at home and it was the best I had felt physically mm -hmm. in like, I swear, like two years. Yeah. I was like, oh, I feel so much better physically and I feel like it's just, there's a lot of stuff added, I think, to food in restaurants or places you order that maybe you don't even, aren't even aware of. Just like canola oil or things that they cook things in that yeah. like 
maybe at home you wouldn't you can make using. the same exact thing but it's way healthier yeah, home, yeah but at home maybe you're using olive oil and like it or avocado oil or something and it's less heavy and less like just whatever upsets your stomach or whatever it is I just remember being like floored by how much better I mm -hmm. felt when I was cooking a lot and just making food at home yeah so obviously again that's been our goal for five years but yeah I feel like the one it'll meal be fun a to day, do it mm -hmm. yeah one meal a day is really good because even for me just focusing on like okay I'm gonna eat breakfast at home I feel like breakfast is a really easy one to make healthy where it's like I don't know I just feel like you can make a really healthy nutritious smoothie that's that's mm -hmm. very easy yeah Obviously, it'd be great to make a super healthy dinner or whatever too, but I'm just saying if you're like overwhelmed by the idea of making like these really healthy meals, mm -hmm. breakfast is like probably the easiest one. Definitely. And it depends like what your lifestyle looks like obviously too because a lot of people, if they're in a rush in the morning, it's harder for them to do breakfast But and maybe they have more time at night. But for people who, you know, have slow mornings, it's nice to be able to like wake up, you have a fresh mind and you can just be like, okay, what am I going to make to start my day off on mm -hmm. the right foot? Um, so good luck with that. I'm excited to do this. Me too. Every day. I'm excited to make some dinner, dinner tonight, actually. Yeah. Leif and I went grocery shopping. We got a bunch of stuff. So that's the other thing is my toxic, well, Leif and I together, our toxic trait is like, we just will get to a point where we have nothing mm -hmm. in our pantry. And so we're just like ordering because we're like, yeah, well, we need to go grocery shopping. But in order to grocery shop, we need to like have time, have time. We need to like, or like think of what we want. We don't just want to go to the grocery shop or grocery store and just like, be putting things in the cart. We kind of want to have a plan. So we need yeah. to think about meals. It's like the whole thing. Obviously everyone has to do that. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, so then it feels daunting and we're like, whatever, just, we'll just order lunch today or whatever. And then it comes dinner time. We're like, well, we still have no food. So mm -hmm. either we have to, again, go to the grocery store or we need to order. So it's nice to also have a consistent yeah. routine of shopping and have food. Like right now we have like tons of snacks, tons of healthy stuff. And it's so nice. Yeah, it is nice. You have to um, summon your healthy girl and your realistic girl when you're at the grocery store. Yes. Can't have one or the other. Because I like, if you're the healthy girl at the grocery store and I'm like, no seed oils. I'm like looking yeah. at all the ingredients and later I'm like, I could kill for a chocolate chip cookie right now. Yes. Why didn't I get some? Like, I know. Or some chips. I just need a quick little munchy, crunchy taste in my mouth. I know. Leif and I were at the grocery store and I'm like, I like go to pick up. I'm like, we could make a salad. And Leif just looks at me and he goes... <laughs> I go, you're right. He's like, he's like, I'm not going to make, he's like, I don't think yeah. I'll make a salad. Cause he doesn't really, that's, he's like, I never crave salad. Yeah. I've been actually like really liking salads mm -hmm. lately for lunch, but I'm like, you're right. Like, I don't know if that's in the cards for this week. It's like the changing so of the much guards. Going on. Yeah. Meme. It's like the changing of the spinach every week. Just yeah. like, but it was so funny. I like went to grab a salad <laughs> thing. He's like, I was like, you're so right. So I grabbed cucumbers and hummus. I was mm -hmm. like, that that's will, quicker, that's easier. quicker. And then I did eat that yesterday. I was eating that as a snack. And mm -hmm. anyway, but I was just dying. I'm like, yeah, you got to be uh, also with, with what your schedule entails that week. Like we had, this week was a very busy week with like our house and stuff. And I'm like, you know, I have been zero cooking. Am I really going to now be like homemaking every single meal? Prob yeah. I don't know. Probably not. Mm -hmm. So we got to get some easy snacks and stuff. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the next one. Two more things. Is to do 15 minutes of tidying every night. The closing shift. I think this is a really attainable thing that can really become a part of your routine. Um, I have fallen off it a little bit, but it, it really has been a part of my routine for a, for a while now. And now if I wake up or if I'm, yeah. If I wake up and my house is kind of messy, I'm like, I hate that I didn't tidy at mm -hmm. night. So I always try and do that. And it really, to me, like makes a huge difference when I go out in the morning and there's not like whatever, like food from dinner still, you know, or like dirty dishes in the sink or um, like even just like blankets scattered from we were watching a show and our, wa our cups of water, out, mm -hmm. whatever it is. It's just like, to just Coasters that, still on the table. Yes, yeah. All of it together. Like ladies toys are out because we were like playing with her or, her or whatever. And it's so simple. I feel like at night to just take 15 minutes and tidy everything up so that when you come out into your space is just tidy. So nice. I know. It feels way better to wake up that like that. When Nick was out of town, he was out of town for like a week. I kind of talked about that last episode, but um, I first of all had 
no one to <laughs> speak to after Case went to bed at like 7.30 or whatever it was. And I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to um, do my cleanup, make sure everything's ready for tomorrow, especially because it's just me tomorrow. So I don't want to have to be playing catch up while I'm also trying to watch Case, like make him breakfast, all this stuff. So I was like, I have to make sure the house is like reset. Mm -hmm. And usually Nick does that. Like he'll take out the trash at night. He'll do the dishes, like load the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And um, I did it every single night. And I was like, this is so much easier than I think it is in my head. And I've been like trying to keep it up just ever since Nick's been home. And now it's e even easier when both of us are doing him. Like, yeah. I'm so sorry. I literally would be watching Housewives while you're like cleaning the house. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, it's so nice to have it in the next morning because um, it sets you up. First of all, if you're trying to have a better morning routine, mm -hmm. you can just wake up you feel a lot better going in and like making a healthier breakfast or like without having drinking to like water. do something first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, yeah. You just feel better. It, there really is just something about the energy of like a tidy place. It's like showing that you respect the place that you live in. Yeah. Um, I mean, definitely putting toys away. I feel like if you have kids, it's like, first of all, a hazard today. I, we didn't clean up the front yard yesterday and I literally stepped on one of Case's cars I was holding something, I couldn't see it and twisted my ankle. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is the most annoying thing that I have ever experienced. But that kind of stuff, it's like, you just have to reset for the day. And once you set a timer, um, I used to like set a timer for 15 yeah. minutes and just clean until, and you get so you much just done. Start, you're like, why would I not finish? Even if it takes a little longer, if my house is a little messier than normal, like, okay, I'm seeing that I need to maybe sweep. I'm just going to sweep. I'm not going to be like, well, my 15 minutes are done. So this this one could really, if you already do this, great. But this one could be life-changing for you if you I keep agree. it up. I feel like it's also probably a lot harder when you do have kids. Like, again, I feel like we have no excuse. Like Leif and I. I feel like our house was messier when we didn't have kids. Really? Uh, I think it's because you don't think to clean. Like when there's toys on the ground, to me, I'm you like, want to I have to clean. Like I have to clean it up. Like I'm just not yeah. going to come out to toys. But when it's like your own stuff, like a jacket on the yeah. couch or like. That's what we're bad at is like just a random. Yeah, the like lace yeah. hat, like take our socks off, you know, mm -hmm. when we're socks. or something like I'm, socks. Yeah, like, I'm bad at that. Um, A jacket and then. Whatever. Your earrings are bothering you yes. while you're watching a show. Yes. <laughs> oh, my table. earrings are always on the coffee table, <laughs> like coasters. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not like dirty. It's just messy. But yeah, I'm always like, I was thinking about that. I'm like, we really have no excuse. Like we're both grown adults who can definitely be tidying up at night. And we normally do, but it does make me feel so much better. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, do you want to yeah. share the last one? Yeah, the last one is sweet. It's a sweet one. Um... So this is, we're calling it one intentional act of connection every day. <clears throat> this could look different depending on, like we've been saying, your life and your situation. So when I originally was thinking about this, I'm like, okay, what about a hug every day? First of all, because you know us, people were shocked that we hugged in your, <laughs> when you told me I was pregnant. They're like, the hug, the once a, this the definitely once a solicited a hug. The once a year. Um, but I'm not a huggy person. I mean, I am with like Nick and Case and that's about it. But even then, I'm not like the most affectionate person ever. And that's something that I don't think is bad, but it's something I'm working on, especially like I just naturally want to be showing my family affection. And I want it to extend to other people so they don't feel I'm so cold. <laughs> I don't <laughs> you think know? you're cold at all. No, I think you're but, so warm. Oh, thanks. But um, I do feel like there is... Again, this is a little woo woo, but I do feel like there is just something like special about physical connection. Like mm -hmm. if you give a stranger, like not a hug, but like if you go give them a little <laughs> kiss, <laughs> but like, I don't know, just like little ways to be comfortable with touch. That's very obviously consensual and not weird. Mostly with people in your life, probably yes. not a random mm -hmm. person. Yeah. But the connection part of it can be, we were just saying like, like one hug a day, even if it's like, okay, I'm going to make an effort to like. Maybe you're, you have roommates or something and you just want to like show your roommates a little extra no, that's affection weird. in any, <laughs> well, I was going to say in any way, not just like, oh, go up and give them a hug. But, yeah. But if whatever you want to be working on, I'm just saying that's my thing that I'm like, okay, I want to be able to be more comfortable with affection. That's more of it. Or if you want to just tidy up their dinner after they eat, you know, or I do their dishes. Yes. I feel like it's either connection or service. Like, again, this is a customizable list. 
But for me, I think I'm thinking of it more as like, okay, getting outside of myself at least once a day, doing something intentional to like connect with someone, whether it's a stranger or someone in my Mm -hmm. life, whether it's like, I think of someone and I'm like, oh, I want to send them a text and tell them like, I've been thinking about you. I love you, whatever. Or if it's, I'm at the grocery store and I see a girl's outfit that I love just being like, I love your outfit. You look so cute, whatever. Um, Yeah. Or whether it is like, connection physically like hugging someone that I love or being more affectionate with yeah expressing appreciation I feel like that's a good one as well remembering like if you have a job and maybe your boss is extra grumpy and you have to see them every day like maybe make an effort to like be like hey I really appreciate all of the stuff that I see you doing like I know you're super busy all the time like it must be a lot just like sharing goes a long way it goes a long way and if you're doing that every day you're finding something new to do you know even if it's just like you said complimenting a stranger that you're walking by or something like that I think it just makes you feel happy makes you feel good it's so true I was watching Survivor have you watched the newest season I started I think I started watching but I haven't finished it I stopped watching like after like or episode like three or four oh okay well there's this girl who was like really annoying everyone on the tribe. And oh, wait, was, I think I know you're talking And about. she was, like, very pessimistic. Like, yeah. everyone's like, you just have, you're yes. not, like, likable. Like, you just are annoying. And you're always, it's always, like, this is wrong, this is wrong, negative, negative. And then, basically, one guy, like, went out of his way. He's like, I'm just going to be really nice to her. And, like, I want her to know. Oh, wait, I did see that. <laughs> I was literally, like, I'm tearing up. Because then she, like, kind of changed. Yeah. And she was, like, complimenting people. She's like, your hair is amazing. Like, she was telling. She was, like, trying. Yeah, she was, like, trying. So I was like, cute. wait, I'm going to sob. But it really is like. Well, also he was like using her to get. Yeah, he's also like (laughs) doing strategy. But I'm just saying it's it Mm kind of shows that it's like just being kind or like even sometimes people in your life who are like annoying or hard to be around. Sometimes if you're like very nice to them, you'll be shocked at just Mm -hmm. like how well received or like they're like, oh, okay, you appreciate me. And then they're so much nicer to you. Yeah. It's just like you also do take an extra second. But for example, even if it is like a boss who's usually very snippy with you or something, or maybe you, you think they don't respect you, whatever it is. Like I've definitely had like, you know, situations like that where it's like, and you're in a professional environment. So you're just like, this person bothers me. Yeah. But when you take a second to be like, oh my gosh, they're in charge of all of this stuff. Like they're probably stressed and they have to like make sure everything's going on. It, and then you express that to them. It does make you think twice about, okay, yeah. now I'm a little less annoyed because I see from their perspective. And also maybe they will be a little bit you know, they'll loosen up a bit. Yeah. Because they know I see them. Or yeah, internally at least be like a little bit more. Yeah. It touches them a little, I think. Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to give you a hug every day for the next (laughs) And just like the longest lingering. I know. I feel like, yeah, we just have never been that type, but. When you've known someone that, I feel like that's a normal thing for like best friends who've known each other for a long time. At least that's what I see on social media. I mean, besides Beth, she always says like, we're not normal. Really? Yeah, she does <laughs> she's say like, that, huh? She's like, I hug my best friends every time I see them. Like, even if I and see Tyson's them every day. And Tyson's very huggy. I always, yeah. we, I always hug Tyson every single time I see him. There are certain people in my life I, like, I'm like, I'll go along with it. No, but it's like, <laughs> I, I'm, like, more affectionate with them because I'll they are like I'll go along with that. their employee. <laughs> but I just feel like, yeah, we've never been the, like, cuddly type. Like, no. with each other. Yeah. We would never be, like, watching a movie and I would never be, like, laying on you. Like, no, no, you're, no. yeah, like, whatever. I guess maybe we are weird because I remember we talked about that with Kelsey and she was like, um... That's a little weird. <laughs> but I feel like in moments where it's warranted, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in like hard moments, mm-hmm. there have been some things lately where it's like we will hug, like yeah, more yeah. than because things are like. You guys just don't get a seat. You just it. don't get a seat on camera. <laughs> but um, yeah. Definitely. Anyway, um, well, there was a last thing. We're kind of, geez, we've been kind of having longer episodes recently. We we wanted to make a, this is a sixth one, but it's it's very optional and it's maybe more of like a weekly thing. Again, we don't want to overload and be like, you have to do all of this because I just feel like it's very, again, even 75 hard is like so overwhelming yeah. when I'm reading it. I'm like, I don't want to do that. But this is an uh, something you can add to option. your week option if you want. And that's making a list of things that you've been procrastinating and just like, again, either once a week knocking one off, once a day, if you have time, whatever it is, like appointments, things you've been meaning to, like I've been wanting to organize my pantry, just like mm-hmm. things like that. And then kind of working it into your schedule again, whether it's once a week or however often you have time to like do these little annoying things you've been putting off. Yeah. If anything, just writing them all down feels so good and reminds you of like, for example, the appointments, if you haven't been to the dentist, when you're an adult and you have to schedule your own dentist appointment, six months goes by so fast. Very quick. So scheduling or like you need to go to the gyno or something like that, you know, 
scheduling those little appointments. If you have a mole that needs to be checked out or yeah, you have to like organize your desk or you've been meaning to call somebody and Mm -hmm. like talk to them about something, whatever it is, just write down everything and try and get as many as you can done. Yeah. Even like setting up if you've been wanting to like, oh, I want to do a girl's night with my friends, but Mm -hmm. you haven't planned it. Like just things like that. Um, I think it's good to have like a running list and then you can kind of go through when you do have the time and knock stuff off or incorporate it into your schedule or whatever. I do find with these kinds of things when I'm doing them all together, they all motivate me to do the other ones as well. Mm -hmm. It's like when I'm in the mode of like, okay, now I'm doing things I'm, you know, I've been procrastinating for so long. It gives me this boost of inspiration and motivation. I'm feeling, you know, good to okay, now the, doing you know, work. my night routine is feeling exciting to me and I want to keep that going. And now I'm feeling connected to my community. All of a sudden I'm feeling great, happy. <laughs> True. True. Um, I think this will be good. I think yeah, it'll be fun. Excited. We should probably make like a list so we can pr- like, um, yeah, we'll post it on our feed and story. What? Well, I'm just saying like swipe over. So okay. Like, yeah, like yeah. a little screenshot. Of yeah. Something. We just maybe need to have a graphic made or something that's kind of coming up quick. We want it to be <laughs> well, I'm cute. like a notes, like literally just okay, yeah, screenshot. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. We'll do something. We'll definitely mm-hmm. have it for you yeah. guys so that you can like Like hope you write it down. <laughs> yeah, they literally have to make physical notes. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you do this little February challenge with us. I guess 75 days. I guess we're doing this freaking February half challenge. a year. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> but I do think that you can customize your own or you can just make your complete own thing. Like mm-hmm. if you're just wanting to do a little challenge and you can make your up your own five things or whatever. But anyway, thank you guys for listening, watching. Uh, if you want to watch on YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You just type in what we said podcast and you guys can physically see us. Hope it's not a jump scare. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, you can subscribe on Spotify and Apple podcasts as usual. If you want to be notified when we have new episodes and follow us on Instagram, for anything extra at what we said podcast. We love you guys so, so much. And that's That's what what we said. said. Bye.